In general, we don't talk about reproductive health. Right. Women don't talk about it because if they're having problems, it's really humiliating for a woman. Right. She, she feels it's her fault. Right. If she can't get pregnant, it's her fault. Right. If she has a miscarriage, it's her fault, right. which is not true, by the way. Right. But right. we never say, oh, my sperm count's going down. Or <laughs> so, oh, yeah. oh, you know, I have so many. It's okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. 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 And a good I point that you point out in the book. Million about uh, if you're out of the three markers, motility, volume, and morphology, if one is off, you're two times more likely to be infertile. If two of them are, are off, six times more likely. If the three are off, you're 16 times more likely to be infertile. Should, I give you an A in my class. <laughs> <laughs> he passed. He, he'll take that. He'll, he'll I'll take that. I mean, I remember that. And, and you know, okay. like to go back a little bit to, to your point, Carlos, so we are the, the clinical version of what you're doing. Yeah. So you give us the why, because we're in the trenches seeing patients every day. And, and I've been doing testosterone replacement, hormone replacement, helping patients optimize their lifestyle for about 12 years. When I started my practice, most of my patients were mid 40s and up. Mm -hmm. Now, more than 35% of our patients are 40 and less. So I was like, what is going on? Is it that young guys, um, want to get juice, they want to go to the gym, what's going on? So so another paper that, that I really like was the paper by Dr. Ramasamy at University of Miami, where he showed that young men, adolescents, the age of 19 to 35, he did a study, and he showed that there was a 20 to 25% incidence of low testosterone in those young men, mm -hmm. and that their symptoms of test low testosterone did not start at the lower level of 300. They studied about 400. Mm -hmm. So those poor younger men would be going to their primary, all the symptoms of low T, which we've covered many times before, with a level maybe in the 400, normal being 300 to 1200, and they're told, you're fine. Mm. It's in your head. Mm. It's an antidepressant. Really? Yeah. And they're lost. Yeah. until they find some, a clinic like us. And what I'm grateful for, there's more awareness and more clinics who are really seeing that what we studied when I was in school is completely different. Low testosterone is no longer a disease of old men. It's yeah. affecting younger and younger men. And we'll even go over the multi-generational effect of those chemicals because it's affecting every generation worse. So yeah. that to me was a big revelation. Mm -hmm. And I want to make now the correlation because remember, when we started our practice, we never looked at semen. That wasn't part of our thing at all. We're a testosterone. We started yeah. as a testosterone we replacement started. clinic. So I want to talk about the link between testosterone and sperm. Mm -hmm. Because as you said in your book also, and all the studies show it, testosterone has been declining by, guess what? 1% a year over the last 30 or 40 years. What's the link between testosterone and sperm count? Well, it's complicated, yeah. <laughs> but um, I can tell you just from an epidemiologist's point of view, um, the correlation is there when you disrupt testosterone production, starting, by the way, in early pregnancy, mm -hmm. right? The first trimester, early in the first trimester, when testosterone starts to be produced by the, test, the fetal testes, if that's not there at the right time and the right amount, then things don't develop properly. And we'll talk about that, yes. I think. But that's true all through life. So all through life, you're making sperm, right? Mm -hmm. 70 days, I think. Mm -hmm. Do you tell people that it takes to make a sperm? There's a little uncertainty of exactly how long, but mm -hmm. 70 days. And during that time, you need testosterone for that to function. So it's not surprising if you're going to knock down testosterone, you're going to knock down that production. Yeah, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so that was important for me. So I'll, I'll do a quick little review because um, the, the, the pituitary is the master gland that controls our testes to make testosterone. And it secretes luteinizing hormone, LH, and follicle-stimulating hormone. So it's the same tree. You have the pituitary, FSH goes down and makes sperm. Here, LH goes down and makes testosterone. If this side of the tree is affected, so is the you other. better believe the other side is. Yeah. So they go hand to hand, and now we even have numbers that the 1%, they are mirroring each other. Right. That's a great point, yeah. Right? And so so they're there. That's it. That's, 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 and to me, I really think that when we're saying that poor, um, low, low sperm count is a marker of mortality, low testosterone is also a marker of increased cardiovascular disease, diabetes, that's right. and, and early Absolutely. mortality. Absolutely. So those two things are so common, and we're seeing them together. Yeah. Should we just take a minute to mention that the testosterone necessary for the masculinization of the genitals 
in the reproductive tract is also necessary for masculinization of the brain. And, wow. and so, uh, you know, another consequence of low testosterone is, you know, neurological damage of uh, defects. So I, I, people don't talk about that in that same connection, but I think we should be doing that more and more. Do well, you mind touching on that for a second? Yeah. Because from the yeah. first to seventh week of the Ambro stage is where the develop the, the sexual reproductive uh, glands and of the of the baby is developed because we start basically XX chromosome, right? Right. Like females, and then that in that seven week. No, stage. no, we don't start. We don't have different chromosomes. We just have a neutral genital tract. So okay. the chromosomal makeup is not going to change. That's that's your, that's from the moment of conception. But the um, the the genital tract is neutral. It's not male or female, and right. then the female is the default and the male develops off from the female under the influence of the testosterone. They need right. testosterone in right. that and seven week, and if they don't get enough, that's where the genitals don't get yeah. developed. And Not we'll fully. get into how that's affected actually in utero, right? In, in, right. in the womb. Uh, but, you know, I think, and, and again, to go back to the why, when, you know, endocrine disrupting chemicals, because that for me was, wow. I mean, and, and how, how... Let's describe first. Yes, I, I, in, in your endocrine. words, what would you... Because, you know, a lot of people are talking about this, right? EDCs. And, you know, a lot of people glaze over... I like, hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Not as many as should be. <laughs> but, you know, from... Yeah. from uh, you know, we, I like to say it. I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. You know, from your perspective, what is an endocrine-disrupting chemical? Sure. So, you know, just briefly, I, I, I say hormone hackers. Um, uh, it's a quick way to say I like it, that. and I like that. more catchy, right? <laughs> but um, so endocrine—that's the hormone system in your body. We have close to a hundred, or maybe over a hundred hormones, but most of them we don't pay a lot of attention to. But the ones we want to pay attention to now, in connection with the reproduction and testosterone and sperm count, are the sex steroid hormones. We already talked about LH and FSH, and there's progesterone, testosterone, estradiol. But the one that I've focus most on is testosterone, mm -hmm. and I think you do too, yes. right? Mm -hmm. um, when a chemical or another factor alters testosterone, it's going to alter reproductive function and other things, for example, brain function. So um, it's, it's not rocket science to understand that when you have a chemical coming into the body that lowers testosterone, it was going to affect reproduction and other systems in the body, yeah. right? Yeah. And every system almost. Right, right. So, so then you have to ask what, what does affect testosterone? Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that. The endocrine system, it's, uh, the human body is a, an amazing, Incredible. amazing feat that we can function like this. Right. And the way our body functions is that we have all those different glands that secrete hormones. This is how our body talks to itself. But it is so tightly regulated. Mm -hmm. I think about it as a Swiss watch, mm -hmm. an incredibly complex mechanism that works perfectly with negative feedback loop to control, almost like a thermostat. Right. So even a minute difference in the concentration of hormones can have severe repercussions. So it's like you have an expensive watch and then you open it and you, tr you throw a handful of sand in that. Mm -hmm. what's going to happen to your expensive watch. Yep. And this is what's happening to us. That's really good. And I love the emphasis on the example of the watch because timing is so critical. Yeah. And, and we'll talk about that. Yes. Yeah. Why don't we talk about that? Um, uh, to me, to me, it's super interesting because, you know, like I read your book, right? And it's kind of like uh, you start seeing all this stuff, right? Like you're more aware and it starts to show right. up. You know, there was a report not too long ago, well, you, you talked about it in your book, where we're now finding microplastics and these endocrine disrupting chemicals in the milk of uh, pregnant women, right? So now our, our generation is being, you know, and, and this, this declining sperm and testosterone, you know, you see it and, and you start to think about it, you're like, yo, 45 years, we've lost 50%. You know, so that means that as long as I've been alive, mm right? Because I'm 42. As long as I've been alive, you know, I could have possibly been exposed to, my mother could have been exposed to, right? To these right. chemicals that right. then transferred to me. And can you talk about that a little bit, how it gets transferred? Sure. Um, even in the placenta, you know, you yeah. talk about that be, you, chemicals being in the placenta. I'm going to quote your book before you say yeah. that. Uh, the most, um, and that's in your book, the most important time in a man's health, whether it is his sexual health or reproductive health, is in utero. 
-hmm. It's the first three months of pregnancy. So we don't have control over this. So this is what opened my eyes when I see a 25-year-old guy comes to the office with all the symptoms of low testosterone, with a low level of testosterone, and no fault of his own. He works out, he tries to stay away from, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he read on, on the internet, don't drink from plastic. He, he read a few things, and he's like, Doc, I work out, I take my supplements, I do everything right. Mm -hmm. How come this is happening to me? And what now we can say thanks to you, you could have been exposed way back then. You right. could have been exposed in utero. You could have been two exposed in the manipulator, right? even two or generations more. or, or more, more before. More. Yeah. So as physicians and clinicians, sometimes we tend to blame the victim. So right. my colleagues, unfortunately, do this a lot. The patient goes and see, comes up with all the complaints. They have low T and they're like, you don't work out enough. You're eating bad. Mm -hmm. You change it. A lot of times there's no power. It's something that happened there. We can help it. We'll talk about how we can turn yeah. a Lotsi guy into an alpha, right. an, a, a nice theta. alpha. A theta. A theta. A theta. A theta. A theta. <laughs> On the personal level, but that really pointed it to me that, wow, we need to talk about this. Optimizing your health is only a scan away. Select the QR code that fits your profile best. And we look forward to hearing from you at the Medical Health Institute.